I want to welcome everybody to today's webinar. I'm Ryan Fisher with Camo Plan. We have David McGee and David Shan Sanchez, Sanchez uh, joining us today with Berkshire Court Apartments LLC. They're going to tell us about. They're going to talk to us about investing in apartment buildings and how they evaluated a current deal that they recently uh, acquired. <clears throat> To start and let you know, Gamma Plan does not provide any investment advice or endorse anybody. We encourage you to do <clears throat> all your due diligence before making any investment. Uh, you should consult with your account, <clears throat> your accountant, financial advisors, attorneys, whoever you trust with that kind of information. The information provided here is purely for education. What is a self-directed IRA? Basically, a self-directed IRA lets you invest in anything that you want. There's a few things that you can't invest in, and I'll tell you what those are. Um, the IRS never tells you what you can invest in, only what you cannot invest in. You won't see that you can invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, apartment buildings, real estate. They only tell you what you can invest in. It's a pretty short list, collectibles and life insurance. So as long as it doesn't classify as a collectible or life insurance, most likely you're able to invest in it using your self-directed IRA. <clears throat> this is what we see uh, the most common investments that our clients are making. Um, real estate, notes and mortgages, a lot of those are tied to real estate, precious metals, that's physical bullion, uh, stored in a depository, and then private placements, um, which we can get into, and Dave can talk to you about that as well. Why do you want to use these accounts? Um, I'm just going to briefly explain this um, real quick for you, but the advantages of using your IRA are obviously the tax-sheltered environment that you'll be able to grow your wealth. Now, if you started out with $50,000 in your Roth, $50,000 in a traditional or tax-deferred account, and then you personally. This is with a 10% return, right, and a 30% tax bracket, right, tax. <clears throat> Same return, 10%. Your Roth IRA over 40 years is going to make $2.2 million. Now, your traditional IRA really makes the same but assuming taxes and everything stay the same, you're going to you know, take your 30% out, so you're going to end up with 1.5. Now, the same investment, same hard work, exact same circumstance, you personally are going to end up with 748. So you can really see the difference as to why you want to use these. It's going to be a lot easier to grow your wealth in this environment here than it is down here in a, ta in a taxable environment. Um, if you have any questions on this or that's not clear, let me know. I just wanted to illustrate that to you. So why do you need us? Basically, the IRS requires you to use an authorized third party to hold your retirement funds. Uh, we're a neutral third party. Again, we don't give you any investment advice or sell any products. We're basically the bookkeeper and we're going to report to the IRS for your IRA. If you have any questions concerning IRAs or how to get it set up, you can contact me, Ryan Fisher, at R-F-I-S-C-H-E-R -E at Camaplan, C-A-M-A-P-L-A-N.com, uh, or you can call 866-559-4430. There's also a bunch of information on our website, other recorded webinars, you can schedule a free phone consultation for a time that works for you. Um, but definitely check out the website. There's a bunch of information there. Um, but let's get this turned over to Dave. I want to welcome you, Dave, both Daves. And you should have something to accept that to show your screen. All right. Ryan, can you hear me? Yes. Welcome. Appreciate you taking the time to do this, Dave. All right. Thank you, Ryan, for uh, uh, inviting me to conduct this webinar. 
and I want to say good afternoon to all the camera player members that are attending this webinar. I just want to kind of present to you uh, an educational webinar where uh, we go over uh, how we found an apartment uh, and we made an offer and uh, we analyzed the deal to see uh, whether it was an attractive investment or not. Uh, my partner Dave Sanchez uh, could not make it today. Uh, he's traveling, and uh, I'll just I'll just pick up his 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 portion of the presentation. But what we have here is a, an apartment building that we found in uh, Lorain, Ohio. It's a 48 unit, and the sales price or the, the price that we contracted it under is uh, 1.35 million dollars. We currently have this uh, apartment under contract and uh, we're scheduled to go to closing uh, towards the end of this month. Okay, a little bit about my background. My name is David McGee. I am the credit partner on this investment project. My educational background is I have a, a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering and an MBA uh, in financial management. I spent the last 30, 35 years in the engineering uh, industry, uh, basically working for uh, oil and refining companies and uh, currently employed at uh, Jacobs Engineering. My real estate experience is uh, I've been in, involved in investing in real estate for the last seven years. I've done a number of rehabs and I, earn, I currently own a, a couple single family homes and uh, apartment duplexes that I use uh, for rental income right now. Uh, my partner Dave Sanchez, he's my experienced partner. Uh, he's been involved in real estate for the past 30 years. Uh, he has a, about 30 years of, of contracting experience, and he currently owns over 700 apartment units. Uh, he's also rehabbed apartments from 100% vacant uh, to uh, to a performing property, which is what's considered performing is uh, 90 to 100% uh, occupancy. Uh, he currently also owns a property management company. And uh, he has owned in the past a, uh, a one of those many storage facilities. Uh, also working with me and Dave, uh, we have a lawyer, a syndication lawyer, who handles all of our legal work, uh, Julianne Sadoti. And we have a, a property manager who's located uh, on site in Ohio, uh, Jack Cornicio. Uh, he's the CEO of Great Lake Realty, and he has uh, 26 years of uh, property management experience. Uh, he has also managed properties for uh, high net worth individuals as well as uh, institutional real estate owners. Uh, he's also have managed uh, not only uh, commercial properties, but he's also managed retail and industrial properties as well. And he also has some uh, construction and rehab experience. Now, uh, because um, I'm, locate, I'm located here in, in New Jersey, uh, right outside of Philadelphia, and my partner Dave, uh, he's located out of uh, Denver, Colorado, and the property is located in Ohio. So we would be considered uh, out-of-state owners, property owners. And even though we have a property manager, is located uh, not far from the property, uh, people are often asked, well, how do you manage the property being so far away? Well, what we do is we hire an asset manager, and the asset manager uh, watches over the property manager, and the asset manager uh, conducts uh, monthly meetings with the property manager to uh, watch over the property as uh, Dave and myself look for other investment properties. And Sue Chera is our asset manager. Uh, her and her husband uh, own uh, over 1,600 apartment units. So she's well, she's well versed in, in how to uh, manage a property and how to oversee a property manager. 
I'll give you a little information about the property itself. And the property itself is located in, in Lorain, Ohio. It's a 48-unit apartment complex. Uh, eight of the apartments are one bedroom, 40 are two bedroom. The unique, th the unique thing about this apartment is that it is 100% under a HUD Section 8 contract. And uh, the great advantage about being under HUD is that uh, your rent is guaranteed. HUD pays the rent very timely, uh, roughly between 80 and 90 percent, with the remaining portion being paid by the tenant. Uh, also, uh, there is a backlog of HUD uh, of tenants looking for HUD properties, and so we have roughly about six months to a year waiting list for, for this property. So there's never never a shortage of uh, tenants. Uh, the uh, apartment complex consists of four brick buildings, and the uh, current owner has made some improvements to the property. He's added uh, double-pane windows. He's replaced the roof on three of the four buildings. Uh, the property is located in a residential area, in a working-class neighborhood, and it's located roughly about two blocks from a Republic steel plant. And I'll kind of I'll kind of show you that in some pictures that we have. Uh, the landlord or the owner is, is responsible for all the utilities, heat, electric, and water. Here's a picture of the property. Uh, like I said, there's four buildings. Uh, these are two of the apartment buildings. Uh, the bottom picture shows the other two apartment buildings, and the uh, upper picture shows you some new construction, new homes being built in the area. So this uh, area uh, consists of some new homes being built as well as uh, uh, existing existing um, properties. Uh, across the street is another multifamily uh, property and there's some single family homes in the area. That's just looking down the down the street there. All right, this is a picture taken this fall when we went out to inspect the property. Uh, this is behind uh, the apartments, so we have a lot of off-street parking. And this is a, uh, some pictures of the interior. Uh, let me just say this. Uh, the apartments are very vanilla, very plain, nothing fancy. Uh, what you would expect from uh, Section 8 uh, apartment housing. Very easy to maintain. Uh, all of it in very good condition, uh, as you can see from the picture. Here's uh, some pictures of the hallway. Uh, very solid construction, well-constructed buildings. And here's some information about the, the site itself. It's, it's four buildings located on two and a half acres. Uh, parking, there's no parking fee, to, uh, late fee really doesn't apply here since uh, HUD pays the rent. And some more detailed information about the buildings themselves. Uh, the roofs are pitched shingle. The exterior is brick and copper wiring and copper plumbing, uh, smoke detectors as such. Uh, these are considered garden st style walk-up buildings, two-story. Now a little bit of background about this, the, uh, where the apartment is located, the city of Lorraine. The city of Lorraine is um, uh, it is the 10th largest city in Ohio. It's located between Cleveland and Toledo, if you're familiar with uh, the state of Ohio. It's located on the uh, uh, northern portion of the state, and uh, like much of Ohio, it's, it can, it's considered a steel and uh, auto, auto town. Uh, Lorraine was also featured in, in the um, CBS 60 Minutes TV program uh, where Donald Trump during his uh, presidential campaign 
he stopped in Toledo and visited the steel plants with the promise to bring uh, more steel jobs to the to the city. Uh, the top employers in Lorraine are uh, for the public sector. It's the uh, county office, and that's the largest uh, public side employer. The county of Lorraine has their offices there in Lorraine, and on the private side, it's it's the uh, Ford Motor Company. In terms of demographics, here's a little overview of, of who lives in Lorraine. Uh, in terms of population, it's, it's a population of about 64,000 people with about 44% of them as renters. And the average income uh, in Lorraine is about 65,000. Uh, Marcus and Millichap, uh, they have issued a, a market multifamily market report uh, for the beginning of 2017 and the, the major market in the area is Cleveland and what they said about Cleveland and the, and, and the surrounding area is that uh, demand for uh, multifamily properties will remain high for 2017. Uh, the vacancy rate for Cleveland is projected to be about 3.9 percent and uh, that vacancy rate is expected to remain low uh, throughout the year. And because of the low vacancy rate, they are projecting that apartment rents will rise uh, approximately 3.8% uh, for the year. Now, Lorraine is, is only located 30 miles outside of Cleveland. So a lot of people that live in Lorraine uh, also work in Cleveland. Here's a, a Google map of uh, two of the apartments. You can see two of them right here. Uh, you can see it's located in a well-maintained residential area, a lot of trees, a lot of shrubbery, and a lot of open space. Okay, this is a little bit higher, uh, I guess a 10,000 foot view. These are the two apartments we just looked at earlier. And the other two buildings are located right over here. They are both uh, identical. These two over here are identical to, to these two over here. And you can see a lot of, it's all residential, uh, a lot of shrubbery, a lot of open land. And just looking a little bit higher, uh, here's the apartment that we just looked at over here and over here. And uh, the reason why I'm showing this is because I wanted to show you the uh, Republic Steel plant, which is located about two blocks away. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a massive plant, uh, several miles long. And I just wanted to show that relative to the location of the apartments. And just looking at a highway map, you can see the rain is here. And Cleveland is just right over here. And Toledo is over to the left over here, just kind of out of the way here. It's a little bit closer to view, uh, 10 minutes away from the highway, and this highway takes you right to Cleveland, so it's easy access to the highway. And here it is. the U.S. Steel plant's located over here, and Republic Steel was over over here. Now, what makes this attractive an attractive investment is that we have an out-of-town motivated seller. Uh, uh, he had someone manage the property that did not manage it well, and he's looking to uh, uh, sell the property and, and purchase other property closer to his home. He's uh, from California. Uh, the current rents are below market, market rates. And uh, from my conversation with the uh, realtor and uh, HUD, uh, we uh, rents are roughly 5% below the current rates. So there's plenty of room to raise the, the current mark, uh, rents. In addition, there's opportunities to lower the utility costs, the way the property is being operated now. 
Uh, we went out there in uh, November of last year to do a property inspection, and it was uh, somewhat of a chilly day, and many of the tenants had their windows open. And for any of you that have owned own property, uh, the last thing you want is for your tenants to have the windows open and the heat on, and uh, you're paying for the utility bill. So we will implement procedures so that the tenants will not be opening their window and uh, losing heat out the, out the windows. In addition, we can add a, additional income by adding laundry facilities to each of the buildings. We can either lease or purchase a washer and dryer and install those into each of the buildings and that will generate additional income. Uh, the utility hookups are already there. I don't know why the current uh, owner uh, hasn't you know, done that, but uh, that's an easy thing that you can do to generate additional income. Now here's some information on uh, the, the uh, unit mix and how much income is generated from the uh, apartments. Uh, we have eight units here, eight one-bedroom units. Uh, size is roughly 600, 600 square feet. And uh, they currently rent for $526. Uh, we have 40 two-bedroom units, roughly 750 square feet. And they currently rent for $633 and for an annual total rent of $354,000. Uh, to purchase this property, uh, we would have to take out a loan, mortgage, and based on the sale price of $1.35 million, uh, we, would, we have taken out a loan of 75% of loan to value of uh, um, just slightly over a million dollars at an interest rate of uh, close to 5%. The amortization of the uh, loan is for 25 years with a, a balloon payment due in 10 years. Uh, this is a recourse uh, mortgage and the monthly payments are roughly uh, $6,000 a month. Now, the economics of the, of the apartment are, are as follows. Uh, the gross rents are roughly $354,000. We project that we can generate another $4,000 by installing laundry facilities. Assuming a 5% vacancy rate, in addition, uh, we project the operating cost to be $210,000. Uh, that gives us a net uh, operating income of $130,000. Know, from that $130,000, we subtract, uh, subtract off our mortgage of about $70,000. That gives us a cash flow before taxes of $59,000. Now, to purchase the property, uh, how much cash is needed? So we have a purchase price of $1.35 million. Uh, subtracting from that a mortgage of $1 million, uh, we need to come up with a down payment of $330,000. Uh, in addition to that, there's some improvements we want to make. We estimate the cost of those of $55,000. However, the owner has given us the credit of $75,000 to make repairs, and the closing costs are, are estimated at $130,000. 37,000, meaning that we have to come up with 400, roughly $450,000 to make this purchase. Now, in terms of, we have to make some assumptions if we're going to look at uh, evalu uh, uh, assigning a valuation to the property in, in, say, five years' time. The first assumption is we want to assume that the uh, rental rates will, will grow at 2.5%, uh, expenses will grow at 1%, and the capitalization rate at resale will be 9.5%. As I showed you earlier, uh, Marcus and Millichat was projecting uh, rents to grow at 
3.8% for the year, and we're using just 2.5%. Uh, talking to the realtor, expenses for the area have been pretty flat for the last five years, so that's where we're, that's why we're only assuming a 1% growth rate on our taxes and uh, utilities. All right, so looking out uh, in five years' time, uh, what, we, what we see is we're starting off at, at doing a purchase, the purchase time, uh, generating income of 354000 uh, Again, I said we, we assume 5% vacancy rate. Uh, the current vacancy rate is very low because it's, it's HUD and uh, the gov with government paying the rents, Nobody wants to move out, so the vac current vacancy rate is close to uh, close to two percent. But we use five percent to be conservative in our analysis of whether this is a good investment or not. Uh, we look we look we talked earlier about generating additional income by installing uh, laundry facilities. Now, and we also talked about uh, we estimate uh, our operating expense, and what we what we have here, we're projecting for the sake of analysis that our operating expense will be roughly $210,000 a year. And what we did was we looked at our utilities and we, we, we selected the highest utilities for the last three years and we used those numbers to, to project a worst case. In addition, we've added in additional funds for a property manager and an asset manager. Currently, the, the property is only expending $177,000 a year or roughly $30,000 less than what, what we're using for our, our, our analysis. Uh, the cap rate calculated is roughly uh, uh, 9.65. And uh, uh, for those of you that are not familiar, uh, the cap rate represents the percent, the percent return if we were to buy this property using all cash, no mortgage at all. So if we bought this property all cash for the 1.35 million, uh, we would be generating about a 9.5% return. Um, the current cap rate is calculated slightly higher at 12% due to the lower uh, operating expenses and lower vacancy rates. The loan constant, uh, this is the interest rate factor used to calculate the debt service on a loan. In other words, if you take this factor, this 6.9% uh, uh, and multiply it by the, the mortgage principal, you'll calculate out what the annual mortgage payments will be. It's a factor used by uh, investors. They can they oftentimes compare this with the cap rate. And for a good investment, the cap rate should at least be 1% higher than the loan constant. And in our case, we're uh, uh, more than 2.5% higher. So, so far, we, that's a good investment. Uh, the DSCR is the debt service coverage ratio. This represents, this is the uh, net operating income divided by the annual loan payments. So in other words, uh, banks look at this number, and as long as this number is, uh, is above 1.2, uh, they will give you a, a mortgage. And what this says is, uh, the banks want to make sure that the property generates enough income to cover the mortgage payments. And that's what the bank is concerned about, that you have enough money to cover your mortgage payment. So as long as this is above 1.2, uh, you're good to go. In, in our case, it is. The break-even ratio is a, is a number that represents how many apartment units do you have to uh, have rented out in order to um, 
pay your bills. So in our case, we have to have uh, roughly 83% of our apartments rented out to uh, cover our uh, cover our, uh, our our expenses. So the lower this number is, the lower this number is, the better. And uh, looking at all these numbers, we have a uh, before tax cash flow of roughly $59,000. And looking at the money that we need to purchase this property, uh, the cash on cash return is roughly 13%. Now that's at the time of purchase. Now as the time goes on, our rents will go up, we're assuming 2.5%, and our expenses will go up roughly 1%. And what that means is our uh, cash flow will begin to grow and our cash or cash return will also increase. So after five years, we're projecting uh, a, cash, a cash flow of $80, $85,000 a year and a cash on cash return of 19%. Now, if, uh, if we sold this property in five years, well, what type of profit will we generate? Well, the projected sales based on the, our increased rent, uh, the, the value of the property should be worth about $1.6 million. Subtracting from that, uh, selling expenses, uh, roughly $100,000. Uh, and then subtracting from that, that total, uh, the remaining balance on our mortgage, uh, we should see proceeds from our sale of roughly uh, $650,000. Now the property will be placed in the LLC. Uh, that's the best way to uh, own a property like this. So the title will be placed in the LLC. And there will be, there will be two classes of investors. The first class is the A class, and these are our, our passive equity investors. These are investors uh, that uh, say want to purchase a property using the IRA or they have additional cash that they want, but they don't want to be involved in the management of the property. So those are our Class A uh, members. Uh, the Class B are um, uh, the management team of the property and other sponsors, uh, other sponsors of, the, of the purchase. And then the uh, property will be managed out of a out of another LLC that will generate to manage the property. And that's for uh, legal protection. Yeah, a, a typical investment like this will generate between 9 and 11 percent uh, cash on cash return. Uh, the investor will also receive uh, annual uh, uh, benefits uh, as a, for as a depreciation tax deduction, and um, of the cash that's generated from the investment, 70% of that cash will be distributed to the investors with the remaining portion uh, going to uh, the, the management team and also the, uh, the credit partner and, uh, and the like. Uh, how long do these investments last? Well, typically, uh, we would reevaluate the, the apartment after five years. And after five years, if, if it looks like it's, if it has increased in value and we want to sell it and split the profits, then that's what we, we would do. We would, we would sell it, say, at a five-year period. And uh, the next period would be uh, in 10 years. You know, so you say, well, why, why sell it at, at five years or 10 years? Well, what mortgage companies do, uh, they place penalties on uh, if you sell the property, say, after one year or two years. So there's penalties involved if you uh, sell the property before five years. So these, these penalties decrease and they, and they drop to zero at, at the five-year mark and at the 10-year mark. So those are the uh, two opportune times to sell, sell, uh, sell the property. Uh, in addition, uh, let's say this is a, a property that we want to keep and we just want to uh, keep it uh, infinitum. Well, what we would do is uh, 
at the five-year period, we will rotate out investors and bring in a new team of investors. Uh, so one, one set of investors will cash out and another set of investors will come in, come in and continue the investment. So I'm going to stop here and find out if there are any questions uh, concerning what we discussed here this, this afternoon. Uh, Let me ask you a few from the chat box, um, and I have a few other questions. But you mentioned that this is a recourse mortgage. Is there such thing as a non-recourse mortgage? Yes. Um, you take yes. that, but yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. There's two types of mortgages: recourse and non-recourse. Um, the recourse, the uh, credit partner is, is held liable for the uh, for the mortgage. Uh, in a non-recourse, um, the credit partner is not held uh, personally liable for uh, maintaining the, the payments on the mortgage. Um, <clears throat> and for anybody out there who didn't see, there's a chat box to ask questions. Next one was, is the cap rate something you take into consideration if you're not paying all cash? Yes. Uh, when I look for a property, uh, I, I typically look at the at the cap rate as a starting point to uh, determine what my cash on cash return will be uh, in, in this type of analysis. Uh, so uh, I start looking for properties if I find that it, that it's advertised at a cap rate of eight percent or higher. Uh, th there are three classifications of, of, apart of apartment complexes. You can, you can have a class A, which represents your, uh, say, 300 unit apartment complex, or your, your Hilton Resort complex. Um, your class B, which, be, which would be your older class A apartment complex. And your class C, which is your smaller, say, uh, 100, or say 70 apartments or less, would be like a class C. Now, this is a class C apartment, and they typically have higher cap rates than, than the class A. And those are bought by institutions who are willing to accept a 3% or 4% return on their investment. Uh, as an investor, that's too low for us. We, we, we're looking for something a little bit higher. Of course, uh, the Class A are, are slightly older pro properties as well. So, yeah, I, I do look at the cat rate when, when, I, when I compare properties. It's a good starting point, but it's not the only thing we use for an, an analysis. Uh, another one, what was the process to find and secure property management team? Um, be well, because this is a, it's a HUD, property under HUD contracts, uh, HUD has uh, a list of property managers that are, that have worked with HUD in the past and have experience with their uh, paperwork and their procedures. And so uh, what we did was we found a property management company that has worked with HUD in the past, and um, that's, what, that's what we did. Okay. Um, How did you find the property? Uh, we found this property on loopnet.com. Uh, Loopnet is uh, similar to the MLS uh, for finding commercial uh, real estate. Uh, they advertise properties that are up for sale across the country, and that's where we found it on. Um, what dollar amount are you looking for from individual investors? Well, uh, I can't say right now. Uh, there's a certain process we have to go. Uh, the SEC, Security Exchange Commission, uh, does not allow us to put that number out 
so what we have to do is we have to collect information on investors and kind of qualify kind of qualify what type of investors they are. So what I would say is I would contact Ryan. Uh, he would send me an email. Then I would I would send you an email with an investor questionnaire and so we could uh, determine what type of investor you are. Uh, for, for investments like this, uh, the SEC would like investors to be somewhat knowledgeable with investing in, re in real estate. So uh, they asked us to collect information about uh, potential investors. So I'm, I'll be more than, than glad to give you that information, but I, I can't give it over the webinar like this. I just can't put it out. Of, yeah, we'll give your information out here. We're, we're, or get, go ahead and give that out now. We're running out of time here. I'll take. I have one more question I'll ask you here. Um, okay. I just put up my contact information. You can copy that down. Dave McGee at 3D Investments at gmail.com. You can send me uh, questions that you have later. Uh, you can send them to myself to Ryan. Uh, you have also, a phone number you want to give them to, Dave? Yeah, it's uh, 609-970-7506. And I saw some people ask for the questionnaire. If you can email Dave at his email there, um, he can go ahead and send that to you. Yeah, I'll also send you a copy of the presentation as well. Uh, I know it's a lot of material. Um, I'll be glad to tell you the, the process we go through to evaluate properties. Um, so if you want to do it on your own, you, you'll know what to do. And, I, and I'll just ask one more there. What was the alternative to LoopNet was the question, Dave. Uh, the alternative to LoopNet is uh, to have uh, individual realtors uh, send you information. And there's also uh, wholesalers up there that will also uh, look into wholesale apartment buildings as well. So. Um, I often get stuff in the in the uh, in my email box from realtors marketing properties. Okay. Do you have to be a qualified investor to invest with you? No. No. Or an accredited investor? No. No. But we just need to know that. But the answer is no. Um. All right, well, go ahead and contact Dave if anybody has any questions concerning their IRA or getting set up or how that process works. Go ahead and contact me. Again, that's R. Fisher, F I S C H E R, at Camaplan, C A M A P L A N dot com. Or you can reach me directly at the office, 215 283 2868. Thanks for uh, the information today, Dave. All right, great. I look forward to uh, answering everybody's questions and uh, providing out any other additional information you would need or like. Great. Thank you. Thanks for everyone who attended today. If you need anything, feel free to contact us at any time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ryan. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye now.